Hey guys, I am Morton Tell and today with me I have Augusta Ayobaha and we're going to be talking on the topic The things teenagers wish their parents knew So Augusta, you know why um, we are part of the Gen Z and we have a new generation and we have a new world order and the world is not like the way it is to be according to our parents before So what are the things that, you, that some teenagers wish their parents knew? Well, if I'll talk from a general aspect things some teenagers wish their parents knew. Um, if we look um, at the homes of today, many homes of today, see that teenagers hide a lot from their parents. They don't say much to their parents. They're mostly on their phones. Their eyes are not really looking at them when they're having conversations, conversations with them and all that. I think it's mainly because uh, teenagers don't express as much to their parents anymore because they feel as if they don't understand them. One of the major things teenagers wish their parents knew is or yeah, is that um, their feelings, they don't always need to be scolded. It's not always about scolding or a life lesson. They just wish like to, for you to listen, for your parents to listen. If they have an issue, maybe they don't want to hear your life lessons on it. They just want you to have an open ear towards their problem, which is one of the major reasons they block them out because they believe that if they say something and they're going to get a scolding out of this, a, very long essay as to why I should not take the decision I took, or something like that. When they really just I have a question. Go ahead. So why do you think the parents like um, school the children when they bring some like? But you mentioned how they feel and try to express themselves and how they feel. So ex what exactly are they feeling? So, and why would the parents want to school them about what they are feeling? Not what exactly, exactly school them about what they are feeling. Okay, you understand what I think. Okay, can you come and visit your mother and tell her, oh, mom, I have a crush on this girl. What happens? Okay, you tell your mom, oh, I have a question this boy. At that point in time, what do you want to hear? No, what happens from your mother's part? No, oh, no, 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 from your a typical Nigerian mother. A typical, typical Nigerian mother. Okay, first of all, in a typical Nigerian home, you won't tell your mother that. Yeah, but so then, what's the reason if, for that? The reason for that is that once you say it, there's either one of these two reactions. The first reaction, you, uh, you receive some words you don't want to receive. <laughs> the second reaction is that it gets quite uncomfortable when they start talking to you. Get, they start saying some things you don't want to hear. It gets quite uncomfortable. So basically, um, the teenagers do not find solace in their parents. Yes, they don't have find solace in their parents. Because of the environment to find themselves. And the environment so now, parents create. what do you think, okay, so are you saying that the environment wasn't created from the onset or during the process? So the parents could have created a more comfortable environment for the from children the from the onset. onset. Or, yes, okay, yeah. So the, onset. the parents never created a foundation to be free. Yes. To just re, um, have a comfortable environment and talk. To talk yes. So, but they find solace in other people that are inexperienced about it Which because is a they problem. listen. Yes, exactly. So that's the next thing we're looking on to now. Friendship. You cannot. Um, teenagers wish their parents could hear hear them. Yes. Listen to them and understand whatever they are going at through. At least try to. Try to understand whatever they are going through. Now let's look at the um, the African other versus the Western world. So there are some things that are normal, mm. and there are some things that are abnormal here. So we've talked about the aspect of feelings and how students, um, children can express themselves to their parents. Now let's look at how, can, how, how before we go back to teenager, how can the parents create that environment, environment for the okay. children? That, I said it should be started from the onset. By that, imagine you have a child. Imagine you have a child. You give birth to a child, and from the get go. Your, the child can't tell you some certain things because immediately they utter a word that okay how do, and let me let me use another scenario. If uh, for a parent to create that kind of environment, it will be easier for the child to start at a young age. Easier, that means not everything should be answered with a hand. Not everything should be answered with a shouting or a shout or a yell. Some things you can deal with calmly. Some things you can deal with understandably. From child, from let's say, from when they start doing something, like from one, two, three, around that age. If it is like a norm, it becomes some like almost like breathing when they reach teenage years. Even when they begin that process or that journey of being a teenager, they've already started telling you things before they're even in it because it started before you know they began. Pivot, okay, now let's look at personal identity. Oh. How teenagers identify themselves. No, there's no we're not going in terms of the Western world. Okay, we're going like in terms of mom, I want to become 
a lawyer, but well, she wants to become a doctor. Mm. How does it, how do you express yourself when you know your parents are very strict and you can't talk to them? So, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you pull that out without getting slapped out or shouted at and stuff that. like that? And your interests. And your interests. You find the passion is particular thing you do not like it. Mm. Yeah. And how do you, how do we also express to our parents that, okay, I'm 16. Yeah. I, there's some, I think there's something that I ought to talk at the age of 16. Yes. I ought to be free. I ought to, like, at 16, I should have friends and you, like, yeah. I should be going out. But you are trying to restrict that child from going out. You are trying to save that child from the world. You are trying to save that child from the world. Too. There are two sides of the coin when it comes to this. There's the first one. Yes, you should be aware of the child's whereabouts, where they go, who they go with, this, that, 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 that. Then also, yes, this child needs to walk around, associate, you know, communicate with some, you know, people. As a parent, you need to be aware that you are, this child is under you, but this child is in the process of living under you. So you can't put a novice out in the world. You can't put a novice out in the world. You need to make sure that you're telling this child what the child needs to know while protecting the child from the child does not need to know. Okay, let's take a scenario like this. A child goes to a public place, for example, let's say the stadium, and she goes out and some very responsible people start calling her. Hey, it's you, hey, girl, come here. And how do you expect okay, that girl to tell her mother when she knows that, even just for a little thing, like, oh, mom, I do not want this. I do not want to do this. So, how is she going to express herself? And how is she going to, like, yeah, first of all, question, how is she going to express herself? Second of all, how is she going to defend herself against that when she has no one to open that? It's a continuous process. Exactly. It's what we're saying in the beginning. They can't express themselves because almost everything they say comes out with a scolding or kind of a situation that's uncomfortable for them to talk. A situation that's uncomfortable for them to say, this is how I feel in certain moments. This is challenging for me. Because the parents did not create that environment where the children are allowed to allow themselves to be as vulnerable as they need to be in front of their parents. In terms of social pressure, so you... Um... In terms of social pressure, you need your parents to tell social pressure. What do we do when we do not have access to parents? So, how now they go and find solace in the wrong place? Yeah. Now, then something happens, the child becomes way worse, that's one of the wrong friends. Then the parents try to correct after all that damage has been done. What age is the child? How long has this you know, relationship between you 16 to 9. Okay, let's say the child is a 16 year old. It he can't, can't express, it's so he goes to meet the other side. It, it gets, that's why I say you start from the onset. It gets very hard at that stage because the child has already formed his own opinions. He has already molded his own way of like the way the person's his life has already been molded at that age. It's still malleable, but it's more, it's less changeable than it was before. So we are saying that all of this leads to moral decadence. It does lead to moral. So that, yes, one of the things. The lack of the listening in here from the parents. From the parents. One of the things that like, teenagers together. really wish they could, you know, get from their parents. And parents, no parents really know that. Because they're more focused on I have to make sure this child grows up to be a good person. I have to make sure this child grows up to be a, like a responsible adult. And they don't realize that in that, the mistakes the child has to make and learn from. Which you have to be there. You have to correct. You have to, you know, guide. So apart from feelings, what other things do they, teenagers wish that their parents? And yeah. talk about. I wish that their parents knew. Apart from feeling that their parents knew and talked about, you actually touched on this like earlier before. Uh, when it came to career options, career options, it's very common in some households in Africa that parents choose your career and it means you're born. They decide, or let's say when you reach a certain age. You just choose your career based on you know where the career takes you, how the career takes you, then what you get from the career. They choose it, and then the child grows up, being an individual person, chooses his own path. Says, "I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this," and the parents just get angry because this is not the plan I planned for you. It's not how I planned. It's not how it was supposed to go. This this creates many scenarios. It creates a distance between parents and teenagers, and it's still doing it till today. We see the same thing back then, we see the same things still today. Now, one of the other things that also comes along with that is parents to understand that this is a new generation and there are new mindsets in this generation. I do agree that your moral mindset, which primarily comes from the Bible, should never change. I do agree that that should never change. But the way we go about things back then and the way we go about things now are two different. They are two different generations. You can't, you can't compare them. You can, but you can't. They are, they are in different shapes and in different ways they come. 
which is another okay so let's take this scenario for example um i'm an engineer i'm 67 years old i have a big firm for construction and i have only one son mm. my daughters will definitely have like six daughters they definitely get married and mm. be another name yes and and this boy wants to study law <laughs> my legacy has been built mm. once i go once i leave this world who continues so what do you expect that parent to be with that child at that point. So would, would we say that the, the man is being so hard on the child? Oh, the man's situation is understandable. But you can't but bend the child the is the man of his own. Exactly, you can't bend the person. Mind. You can't bend So what do you do in that situation? What do you do in that situation? You don't go like this. Mm, this is why you should always have a plan B. <laughs> what would be his plan B? Because <laughs> if there's nothing greater than living, there's nothing, there's no feeling better than, than leaving something, something down for your child. To your child. Yeah, to your child. So okay. what do you expect that child to do? And he has no passion for anything science yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah. So what happens? What happens in that situation, I would say, is that the... Well, it seems that the child would have shown signs. From the beginning, the child would have shown, shown signs. If the father took to sleep the same, the child would have said, shown signs at least, that I was not interested, I was never interested in this. The child would have shown signs. What I, This is not even the advice. What you know, a parent should do in a situation is to try to be more understanding because it's a very it's a tough spot. Parents should try to, to be understanding towards the child that, mm, okay, you don't have interest in my legacy, but it's my legacy and I'm your father. So how are you going to do it? How are we going to do it? Should so what be, happens when there's no one ready to compromise? There's no place to compromise. As a life situation, I can't really explain. <laughs> there's okay. no place to compromise. There's no place to compromise. Uh, if there is no place to compromise, it's a burden for both of them, almost immediately. It's a burden for both of them, almost immediately. I genuinely think that if you own a big family like that, if you have plan A, plan B, and plan C, plan A, maybe your child, plan B, maybe somebody you already started training in your company. So, okay, now, that's goes a very interesting topic, online relationships. Like online Yes, teenagers relationships. that find themselves in online relationships with other people. Like just normal talking, they are just friends, and um, someone you've never met. And how do you tell their parents that someone you've never met? How do you tell their friends that someone you've never met? Yes, I have a new friend. I have a new friend. friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to the you first option. Is the, yes. is the child is the child okay to tell? Is the child comfortable enough to tell you that? No, yes. that's the problem. There's how do we make the child comfortable enough to tell your parents? I don't know someone you've never met, and you're inviting them over. Hey. Or how? Over. How did you get into that situation? That's the question. Yes. I asked. So how how do we do that? How do you okay? Because. I actually have to solve the situation or what if I was in that situation? If I was in that situation. Yeah. If yeah, I was in that situation. Good. Okay, first of all, if I was in a situation where I still met someone online and I was talking to the person and it got to a point like it's a friend online and it got to the point where this friend online is like this person is around the area or the person is friends with me or yada yada yada. Or yada yada yada, and you want to you know invite the person over. First of all, what kind of friend is the person? What kind of friend is the person? Second of all, how were you you know brought up, and how did this your bringing up lead to this lead to this uh, relationship online? So if this so if this relationship online is not pure if this is online is not pure it's a don't have uh, how do i what was i gonna say i completely lost my type of sense. if the relationship online is not pure it depends on the kind of relationship is online first if the relationship online is not pure i generally think there's something wrong with how you got there so you shouldn't even think about that there's something wrong with how you got there if the relationship online say it's like a pen pal relationship you guys talk like you know just friends purely platonic if it's that kind of what if he leaves that stage? He cannot leave that stage. No, you should not allow him. I have a crush on boundaries. Have, even though you have a crush, so the child should have that boundary. Boundaries. So it's something have... with parents to teach children, and if the, if the child is not, the child is not free with the parent. You know, the child can't t- tell things to him. The child will know what boundaries are. Will know where to stop. Will know when to stop. Sure. So you need to talk with your parents when your parents teach you. You need to talk with your parents for your parents to know your state of mind, parents to know your state of understanding to correct or to, you know, bolster and teach. So, okay, so how do we tell, um, how do teenagers tell their parents about their, their peer influence? 
kill that are going through like on social media is like on social media they have their friends um the particular dress in pattern yes, so how do you do with that their friends are doing a particular way because today we see that most teenagers in our generation are into drink they're into drugs, drugs drinking, alcohol and yeah so and many 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 other and if you're under that pressure how do you tell me if you're under okay if, 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 okay if no, if how, how do you get me more like oh, my friends are drinking and how do you express yourself about it? If you know your mom's going to hit you in the head. If you know your mom's going to hit you So that's the, the problem. That's what I'm saying. hitting in the head. So how, how does this child express it to the mother or the father? Majority of the time, the child will not. Because there's a hitting on the head. The child will not. If the parent is violent in his response to what the child is going to say, if the parent immediately becomes judgmental towards their situation, the child will not because the child is, if you feel as if if I get into this I'm gonna get in more trouble. He's afraid of the child's afraid of you know what could happen. Scenarios that start painting in the child's head. It's not a good environment for a teenager. It's not. So guys, it has been a nice time with you. So we've got a lot of things that teenagers wish that their parents knew. And well, there's one thing we've learned from today is um, parents out there that might that might be listening, give your child a listening ear. Let them express themselves because there might be a lot of things that are eating them up. Just because you do not want to listen or you feel you are strict, you're trying to you're not trying to spread the rose each other against proper. Try to get that child listening here so they can express themselves. Because you might think that you're trying with the road, you're trying or being strict, you're trying to correct something, but later when that child can't express themselves, a lot of things can get eaten up then later well, it can become a news and more different opinions, wrong opinions are formed. Yeah. Then later it can become a nuisance to society or a menace to society. So try to give your child listening in here and teenagers also try to talk to your parents. It was a nice time. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Uncle Sayo. It was a nice time with you. See you again.